Hi, my name is Atif Darwish, professor of OPGY in Aswat University, Egypt. In this talk, I'd like to simplify the topic of endometriosis. You know, a typical pregnancy means uh, a pregnancy outside its normal site, which is endometrial cavity. The same applies, the same idea applies to endometriosis. If you see endometrial glands and stroma outside the normal endometrial cavity, this is called endometriosis. So this term does not inform it is inf inflammation or malignancy or neoplasm. It is abnormal loma seen in our patients. It's called an enigmatic disease. Why enigmatic? Because we don't really know the actual cause of this uh, ectopic endometrial glands and stroma implantation elsewhere in the body. We don't know exactly what is the definite uh, clinical presentation. The patients may present with different varieties of clinical presentations. We don't know the fate of the disease, the prognosis of the disease, and the definite uh, lines of treatment are not clear. So it is an enigmatic disease of medicine. What's endometriosis? As I told you, ectopic endometrial glands and stroma that are implanted elsewhere in the body leading to a chronic recurrent disease and this chronic means it's, it will persist for a long time it is not an inflammation it will persist for a long time and if you treat this disease medically or surgically it is possible to recur again and you should know that this disease is estrogen dependent because estrogen hormones hormone increases the size of the implants and it is associated with inflammation, so it is an inflammatory condition. Moreover, there is no surgical or medical cure of this disease. This is the, def the actual definition, and we should use this definition during counseling of our patients, that you have a chronic recurrent estrogen-dependent disease associated with inflammation, and unfortunately we don't have a definite a treatment with medically or surgically. Now the endometrial glands and stroma are ectopically implanted elsewhere where any part of the body can be uh, a site for implantation outside, uh, mainly the pelvis and maybe outside the pelvis, the abdomen, the pleura, the kidneys, gluteal regions, liver, bladder, and so on. The, if we take a biopsy from this lesion elsewhere in the body, you will see endometrial glands and stroma associated with is it a common disease? Is it a rare disease? How many of you heard about endometriosis? It is not uncommon. It is nowadays it is increasing in the prevalence in the societies, particularly in cases with pelvic pain. So if we have a female patient with pelvic pain, we should put endometriosis as a basic differential diagnostic uh, cause and it reaches up to 40 or 50 percent of those cases but if our patient has infertility again the prevalence of this disease is increasing but generally speaking in the societies the uh, rough estimation of the prevalence of endometriosis can be from 5 to 10 percent of cases we had a study and we found at our location that the prevalence of typical endometriosis is around 7 to 8 and the prevalence of atypical endometriosis around 8 to 9 percent of our uh, what about the age prevalence the this as i told you this is an estrogen dependent disease so we have to expect that this disease occurs more in the age of excess estrogen which is the reproductive age so this is uh, uh, this represents around more than 52 percent of cases but we can see it in the immediately postmenarchal and premenopausal and sometimes postmenopausal prevalence. So it is not 100% uh, uh, should be in the estrogen uh, uh, secreting periods of the female's life. It can occur in other extremes of life or other uh, durations, age uh, uh, groups of our patients. Why the endometrial glands and stroma migrate and make ectopic implantation elsewhere in the body? We do not know exactly. So it is an enigmatic disease. 
The oldest theory is the retrograde menstruation, which is Samson's theory, which means that some of the menstrual blood goes back to the fallopian tube and implanted on the uh, ovaries and in the Douglas pouch. That's why these are the commonest sites of, of endometriosis, but it does not explain other uh, forms of endometriosis, like pleural endometriosis, for example. Another theory is Halpin's theory of lymphatic or hematogenous spread, and it is not uh, really a, uh, c uh, explaining uh, all cases of endometriosis. The same is metaplasia, thalamic metaplasia of the uh, peritoneum or uh, the theorem of the peritoneum, which is Meyer's theory. Uh, others uh, mentioned tismularian wrists, others bone marrow uh, uh, problems or some stem cells. These are theories that may explain, but do not really estimate why this endometriosis occur, why does endometriosis occur in those patients. Another possibility is that some people have genetic predisposition and that's why it goes in some families. Uh, some uh, mention that endogenous factors like estradiol, altered immune system, environmental factors may contribute to the occurrence of endometriosis. But really, there is no single theory explaining all cases of endometriosis. And of course, combinations of uh, many theory uh, are uh, supposed by some authors. But in this figure, you cannot see a definite cause of endometriosis, why there is ectopic endometrium outside the normal endometrial cavity. But some patients are at risk. As I told you, there is a hereditary incidence, so some families may have a uh, higher prevalence of endometriosis and it has been estimated that a mother or sister with endometriosis is six times more likely to develop endometriosis and it is common in a non-liberous woman with no pregnancy, no progesterone due to high prevalence of estrogen in their uh, circulation, non-liberous women, non women or infertility women, early menarche due to excessive estrogen, polymenorrhea, hormonal imbalance, menorrhagia, due to excessive blood and is possible to have retrograde menstruation. Genital tract obstruction may lead to retrograde menstruation. History of PID may lead to inflammation and exacerbation of this occurrence. But these are just risk factors for those patients, which mean that if you find a case who is infertile or having menorrhagia, having PID, having uh, uh, genital tract obstruction, you should think in if we see endometriosis by ultrasonography or by laparoscopy, how can we describe this disease? There should be a staging or a classification system. The commonest is the American Fertility Society classification or SRM classification, which classifies patients according to the severity, mild, moderate, severe, C1, 2, 3, and 4. And these mild cases, we have to expect they have mild lesions, mild spots on plants, fine adhesions, stage 2, more, ad more aggressive, stage 3, more aggressive, and the worst is the stage 4, with extensive adhesions to the colon, to the intestine, to elsewhere. So these are the uh, practical uh, approach to uh, identify the severity of our patient and to put her which stage. We have to inform our patient after laparoscopy, for example, that you have a stage 4 endometriosis, which means that you have an aggressive disease, advanced disease, and you there is a high possibility of recurrence, and we may make another operation for you. This is very important for post-operative counseling of our patient after doing laparoscopy. Another classification of endometriosis is very important and very practical. We can classify endometriosis into just three groups. If you find the endometriosis confined to the ovary and forming an ovarian cyst full of menstrual blood, altered menstrual blood, or retained menstrual blood, is called ovarian endometrioma, and this blood becomes brown in color due to absorption of fluid of, from the blood, so it is called chocolate cyst. Chocolate cyst is not a good cyst, it is a bad cyst, means that there is an endometriosis inside the ovary which may destroy the ovarian substance and may affect the ovarian reserve of our patient. So this is type 1, which is ovarian endometriosis. Sometimes we find the endometrial endometriotic implants 
on the peritoneum and if they are uh, superficial not penetrating uh, uh, more than five millimeters this means that superficial less than five millimeter this is called superficial endometriosis if it is more than five millimeter penetration of the peritoneum and affecting the adjacent vital organs like the rectum bladder ureter uh, uterosacral ligaments this is called deep infiltrating endometriosis DIE. So we have ovarian endometriosis, we have superficial endometriosis, and we have IE. Now we are uh, at the outpatient clinic and we are seeing our patients. What is the uh, presentation of our patients? As I told you, most of those cases with ectopic endometrium are presenting with pain, different forms of pain. All the time, pain is called chronic pelvic pain more than six months continuous pain, maybe cyclic pain, which means increases with time, uh, with some time and decreases with some time. The commonest example of the cyclic pain is a special form of dysmenorrhea, which is a combined spasmodic and congestive dysmenorrhea due to this endometriosis. We have uh, spasmodic, which means uh, dysmenorrhea with the onset of menstruation, congestive before the onset of menstruation. In endometriosis, the pain starts before menstruation and does not, uh, uh, did not uh, relieve or does not relieve with the onset of menstruation due to entraining of the, in, of the blood and the menstrual blood inside the, ecto the endometriotic lesion. So the pain continues with menstruation. So the dysmenorrhea of endometriosis is a special type. Also, the patient may have a pain during defecation, which is called dyskasia, during micturition, which is called dysuria, may have a patient during intercourse, which is called dyspareunia. All these are different forms. The patient may have acute pain, acute pelvic pain, and this is due to rupture or torsion, rupture of the endometriosis, which is common, or torsion of the endometriotic cyst if it is uh, bedunculated, which is rare. So these are different forms of pain with endometriosis. The second main complaint of our patients is infertility. Most of the uh, patients with endometriosis coming with infertility. Sometimes they have two complaints. They have infertility and pain as well. But their pain is concentrating on infertility or concentrating on pain according to the uh, uh, urge for treating such a complaint. Another group of patients is abnormal uterine bleeding due to menstrual irregularities associated with ovarian endometriosis, and these are the main groups. So we have to put this clinical presentation growing in our mind during evaluation of our patient and during planning our uh, treatment uh, protocol for those cases. Either pain, either infertility, or abnormal uterine bleeding, sometimes combination of more than one group uh, exists. So pain, infertility, and mass, dysmenorrhea, pelvic pain, dyspareunia, infertility, menstrual pain, tenismus, dyskasia, uh, hematochesia, uh, uh, diarrhea, dysuria, and so on. We have to examine this patient who has pain or infertility or abnormal uterine bleeding. Sometimes examination is completely free. Sometimes there is marked tenderness in the Douglas pouch due to implantation on the uterosacral ligaments. And this nodular examination in, of the posterior fornix by vaginal examination is characteristic for uterosacral ligament implants, and this is very important. And this is a cause of dyspareunia for this lady. Another examination that you may find a mass or nodule elsewhere, Douglas pouch in the adenixi, which is fixed. Uh, which is associated with severe pain with induration and mostly retro, uh, uh, retrovaginal septal uh, endometriosis can be diagnosed by vaginal examination. And uterine or adnexal fixation or adnexal mass like endometrioma can be uh, felt by vaginal examination. So don't ignore to do BV examination for your patient before going to the following which is ultrasonography. So history taking is very important to put our patients into one group, pain, infertility, abnormal time bleeding groups, to make vaginal examination and to make conscious pain mapping to define the severity of the disease. If the patient has severe pain during pain mapping, this means that it is an aggressive disease and we should make a, a prompt treatment for this case. 
Imaging include ultrasonography, you may see an adnexal mass, which is endometrioma, other nodules, kissing of the ovaries, proximity of the ovaries to the midline, and so on. Sometimes we may do MRI, but laparoscopy is a definite diagnostic tool for endometriosis because you see direct visualization and you can take a biopsy by laparoscopy. Sometimes uh, biochemical markers are requested like CA125, but it is not uh, specific for endometriosis. So here is ultrasonographic picture of endometriosis due to endometrioma in the ovary. A mass can be seen with uh, echogenic mass which with heterogeneous echogenicity and here is the border. Imaging by MRI is very valuable to diagnose endometriosis as less or as low as 3 mm lesion can be detected by MRI. But laparoscopy is the key uh, for the diagnosis, but don't forget that laparoscopy per se is not the diagnostic for endometriosis diagnosis, the, uh, laparoscopy plus biopsy because the definite diagnosis of endometriosis is histopathologic based on the biopsy assessment. At laparoscopy you can see the uterus, the ovaries, the tubes, the uterosacral ligaments, the ovarian ligaments, colon, Douglas pouch, all are free. This is but during laparoscopy, if you find an endometriotic lesion, it may be typical, which is black, plush, or brown lesion, powder burn lesion, or sometimes atypical, which is clear, red, white uh, lesion, sometimes vesicular lesion with peritoneal windows or defects. So you may see typical or atypical endometriosis, and these are pictures of Douglas pouch endometriosis, typical endometriosis with puckering or adhesions and uh, red lesions with physicals with red lesions here it spots again all these are atypical endometriosis and here is uterovesical pouch with typical endometriosis brown lesion and here is the uterus and these are omental adhesions due to associated inflammation and you can see the ovaries are enlarged with Now we confirm the diagnosis of endometriosis clinically, sonographically, laparoscopically, and how to treat uh, uh, this case. The goal of treatment is to stop progression of this disease. I told you it is a chronic recurrent disease. Our target is to restrict progression of this disease and to control pain and to help her to have a baby because most of them are infertile. And lastly, if they have abnormal uterine bleeding, we have to control this uh, uh, state of abnormal bleeding. We have to counsel our patients and tell them that this disease is a chronic disease, unfortunately not curable, no cure so far. We have uh, uh, to offer you some lines of treatment, but the optimal treatment is unproven or is not ex existent so far. The treatment depends on the complaint. The treatment is individualized. We have three groups, pain group, infertility group, and abnormal uterine bleeding group. So the lines of treatment for pain, infertility, or bleeding are classified into two groups, whether medical or surgical. Of course, medical treatment is the, is the best, is the first choice, because it is simple, easy, and uh, is not was not associated with intervention and risks of anesthesia and so on. But surgical treatment is more effective and uh, is more uh, destructive to the lesions and the plants, and uh, the success rate is much more better than medical treatment in many cases. So in this algorithm, we can simplify and summarize the lines of management of endometriosis according to the complaints. If our patient is coming with pain, we have to look, is this pain mild to moderate? So in such a case, we can prescribe empiric treatment, symptomatic treatment for pain like non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory and so on. But if the pain is persistent, we can prescribe oral contraceptive pills continuously to make suppression of the, uh, uh, the ovaries and no, no estrogen. And by this way, the endometrial implants are uh, will shrink because it is estrogen-dependent disease. Sometimes we give high dose of progesterone, which is called synthetic progesterone, progestagens or progestines, to make suppression of the ovaries as well. This protocol is suitable for patients with mild to moderate pain. 
But sometimes we have another patient with moderate to severe pain and she's coming to us with severe agonizing pain, no time to give empiric treatment and already she had a history of empiric or hormonal treatment before. So we have to go to laparoscopy. At laparoscopy we confirm diagnosis and we take biopsy and make surgical excision or ablation of the endometriotic implants. After laparoscopy, some of our patients will be relieved and will be grateful due to this intervention. Sometimes they are not completely relieved. In such cases, we can make combined uh, uh, or, or adjuvant medical treatment or hormonal treatment in the form of danocrine or a contraceptive pill, xenorrhage agonist or high dose of progesterone. But sometimes we have another patient after a tedious laparoscopic intervention, she is coming to us and she has a severe intractable pain. In such cases, we have to offer her more radical surgery like hysterectomy and uh, salpingoferectomy uh, to relieve this pain and this uh, aggressive or radical treatment is offered, of course, for a patient with severe pain but does not desire further fertility. She, is, is, she completed her family. Or we can offer her medical or hormonal treatment for six to nine months. So this is a line of management of pain. In this slide, I can summarize to you the different uh, lines of treating pain associated with endometriosis. Firstly, you have to assure your patient that this endometriosis is a chronic disease and she has to accustom herself with this disease and she knows, she has to know that it is a chronic and persistent disease. But this line is not sufficient. We have to offer her either medical treatments in the form of symptomatic treatment like opioids, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and others, hormonal treatment, TUCs, progestins, aromatase inhibitors, danazole, GMRH agonist, GMRH agonist plus uh, add back therapy. Or we can offer her intrauterine system insertion which is uh, pro, uh, progesterone releasing intrauterine contraceptive device to release hormone inside the endometrial cavity and to make suppression of this uh, endometriotic lesion. And lastly, surgical treatment may be reconstructive or radical which means excision. Reconstructive is excision of the lesion and correction of the anatomy and radical is removal of the uterus and ovaries. Sometimes combination of hormonal and surgical treatment is offered. What is the basis for hormonal treatment for a, a case of endometriosis? We know that the ovary secretes estrogen and estrogen is the hormone that nourishes the endometriotic either drugs to inhibit ovaries, either drug to avoid the effect of, or prevent the effect of estrogen on the endometrial tissue, or drugs to work uh, by decreasing estrogen production inside the ovaries. Aromatase inhibitors are very valuable in such a case like uh, letrozole, and they block the formation of estrogen, uh, at least as good as other hormonal approaches and maybe better to this line is expensive, is not uh, prescribed for a long period and is not uh, well approved for endometriosis. Continuous oral contraceptive pills will lead to pseudo pregnancy by suppression of the uh, production of estrogen from the uh, ovaries and this progestagens or progestines are very effective as GnRH agonist for pain control, but should be high dose like medroxyprogesterone as state 10 to 30 milligram per day or Dibuprovera, which is uh, 150 milligram twice monthly. This is the high dose of progestins to suppress the effect of estrogen on the endometriotic uh, tissues. But the side effects are abnormal uterine bleeding, mood change, weight gain, and amenorrhea the change associated with high dose of progesterone. We can give danocrine, which uh, is uh, a steroid with some androgenic activity, inhibits FSH and LH, and uh, causes endometrial regression and atrophy, preventing menstruation and symptoms of endometriosis, but it may be associated with acne, weight gain, musculinization, and hirsutism, expensive line of treatment. GNRH agonist is a uh, a drug that simulates GnRH hormone of the body 
uh, initially it will stimulate FSH and LH, but after some time it will lead to what's called down regulation and pseudomenopause, suppressing the pituitary gland, suppressing the ovaries, and causing mitral uh, uh, implants to shrink. The drawbacks include long-term success, uh, uh, are not sure in all cases, uh, expensive line of treatment limited to hypo, uh, limited by the hypoestrogenic state, uh, osteoporosis may occur if prolonged use more than six months, uh, and trying to minimize its effect on the uh, bones and the hypoestrogenic status, we can add back some estrogen to increase its duration of uh, administration up to one year, but so far it can be used for six months at that time. Intrauterine uh, contraceptive device releasing hormone is a special type of intrauterine contraceptive device uh, uh, releasing levonorgestrel to uh, have a daily dose of uh, progesterone up to five uh, years and this uh, line of treatment has been found to improve pain and to improve abnormal uterine bleeding in cases with endometriosis and in the same picture you can see uh, long-acting uh, uh, gene rich agonist and we can see uh, danocrine at the same time and sometimes patches of hormonal release can be used for such a purpose. These are the hormonal uh, lines of treatment of a case of endometriosis with pain. So if we have another patient with endometriosis, but infertility, the lines will be differ, will differ from this line of treatment. The last uh, uh, line of treatment of patients with pain is surgery. Surgery may be reconstructive or radical. Reconstructive means excision of the lesion or ablation of the lesion and uh, desolizes, uh, and this, by this way we can restore the normal anatomy of this female because she may have a baby later on. This can be achieved by laparoscopy and in severe cases laparotomy can be done if the patient has a history of a previous laparotomy, previous uh, several times of correction or uh, several times of laparotomies or laparoscopies, uh, she can be offered uh, laparotomy. And radical treatment is total hysterectomy and bilateral salvage of hysterectomy if the fertility is not desired and it's actually it is the last line of treatment. In this picture you can see ablation or excision of superficial lesions by scissors you can grasp the peritoneum and remove the lesions of endometriosis. You can uh, remove a lesion from the ovary which is ovarian endometrioma and separate the adhesions from the tubes and in this video you can see the ovarian endometrioma has been opened, the chocolate material has been uh, re washed from the ovary and with repeated suction irrigation with saline and the flow view is clearer now so we can grasp the endometriotic cyst itself and make peeling off of the cyst outside the ovary by removal of this abnormal cyst and uh, uh, grasping it outside the ovary to get rid of the endometrioma completely. We opened it and we sucked the chocolate material, but the cyst wall is inside. So if you relieve the cyst wall inside, this uh, carries a high risk of recurrence. The occurrence rate is very high. So we can remove this cyst outside, but excision of the cyst wall like this procedure is uh, not uh, universally approved because it may have a deleterious effect on the ovarian reserve. It can, uh, some, sometimes we take a biopsy from this cyst wall and we find follicles inside the cyst wall. This means that the ovarian reserve may be affected. So we can pr do this technique for patients with unilateral uh, ovarian endometrioma, patients who are young with good ovarian reserve, patients with normal antimalarian hormone estimation prior to the operation and in these cases we if we remove this uh, cyst wall uh, the ovarian reserve usually is not affected but it's not recommended for patients who are old age or perimenopausal or who have uh, restricted ovarian reserve or limit decrease their ovarian reserve who have uh, low antimalarial hormone levels or near low, low antimalarial hormone levels and for patients with recurrent endometrioma because recurrent endometrioma uh, is not good to be treated by 
uh, bearing off of the cyst wall because uh, also the same uh, uh, fact be, uh, stands behind this that uh, in the current endometrioma the ovary has been subjected to a previous operation and the ovarian reserve has been uh, uh, affected. So this is a cyst wall removed and should be taken for biopsy of course in uh, such a case. This is another case of what's called kissing ovaries. The ovaries are enlarged, bilateral ovarian endometriomas, and reaching to midline, each one is kissing the other, and extensive adhesions of the ovaries to the back of the uterus, to the fallopian tube, to the Douglas pouch, and the uterosacral ligaments. In such a case, in such a case, uh, if you dissect the ovary and uh, free it from the ovarian fossa and the back of the uterus, you will find extensive adhesions and here you can see the rectovaginal septal adhesions colon is here and the rectovaginal septal uh, endometriosis is uh, occurring and you can see the chocolate material coming out from the uh, endometriomas and this is very important uh, for removal of this endometrioma and now you make peritoneal toilet, adhesolysis, coagulation or ablation of the endometrial implants and if the patient, as I told you, if the patient has a limited ovarian reserve, don't remove the cyst wall, just coagulation of the bleeding points, and this is quite sufficient for this case. This, look to the extensive adhesions associated with endometriosis. Endometriosis is not an innocent disease. It is an aggressive disease and leads to extensive adhesions and puckering, and the tissues are destroyed. Sometimes it leads to intestinal obstruction. Sometimes it leads to... Uh, the deleterious effect or bad effect on the fertility and pain. That's why this patient has severe pain, agonizing pain, due to extensive adhesions and colon and rectogenal septal affection. And we have to consider these uh, issues when we are making counseling for patients and we have to offer our patients laparoscopy to improve their uh, complaints and to uh, relieve the, uh, the, this aggressive uh, disease and we make coagulation like this, coagulation of the lesions by monopolar diathermy, by laser, by bipolar, by whatever, to destroy the endometriotic uh, tissues and to uh, avoid further disease. So if we have a patient with intractable pain at laparoscopy, a diesel destruction of the endometriotic implants, uh, coagulation, uh, excision of the lesions, reconstruction of Douglas pouch, and sometimes we make presacral neurectomy by laparoscopy as well. So this is the group of pain treated either medically, hormonally, uh, hormone-releasing intracranial device, surgical or combination lines of treatment. But we have another patient who has an infertility. She is coming with infertility and she knows that she has endometriosis, but she is desiring a baby. So this case should be evaluated as any case of infertility by infertility workup, including semen analysis, HSG, hormonal profile, and so on. And after assessment of the infertility, if you find uh, her status is good, you can offer her expectant management. If the uh, complaints are persistent, including infertility plus minus pain, we should offer her laparoscopy. And here you cannot see the oral contraceptive pills, you cannot see high dose of progesterone, you cannot see uh, GMRH agonist or uh, uh, dancrine because the patient is asking for fertility. We offer her laparoscopy, laparoscopic diagnosis uh, to uh, uh, excise the endometriotic lesion, to coagulate endometriotic lesion and uh, this is a best line for this infertile patient. As this, at the same time, we have to evaluate the fallopian tube patency by chromopertubation. We have to do hysteroscopy. We have to do all these techniques to enhance the fertility for this patient. At the same time, we, if the patient is proved to have uh, poor ovulation, we have to treat ovulation by, during the expectant man, line of management. After surgical intervention by laparoscopy, the patient comes to you and tells you that she has uh, a history of laparoscopy six months, one year ago, one year ago, but no pregnancy. In such a case, you can offer her an assisted reproductive technique like in vitro fertilization or ICSI or super ovulation and IOI. These are the uh, lines of treatment of infertility, very short if compared to pain, because just 
just evaluation of infertility by infertility workup, expectant management, plus minus induction evaluation, then laparoscopy is in assisted reproduction. These are the lines of treatment, as I told you. And lastly, the group of abnormal uterine bleeding can be treated by supportive treatment, including uh, um, uh, anti-bleeding uh, agents like tranexamic acid or uh, dosamine, and sometimes you give uh, non-steroidal because non-steroidal antiviral drugs minimize uterine bleeding by around 40% and relieve any pain. Also, you can offer the patient hormonal treatment like high dose of progesterone or continuous COCs, and you can insert an intrauterine uh, contraceptive system inside the uterus with progesterone release continuously uh, for five months. The possible complications of endometriosis include, of course, infertility up to 50% of cases, pain uh, uh, in, this, in those cases, chronic pelvic pain, rupture of endometrioma, which is acute pelvic pain, uh, blockage of the GIT or any system, which is a rare complication, and lastly, recurrence after corrective or conistory. In conclusion, the endometriosis is a common, chronic, recurrent disease, estrogen-dependent, associated with inflammation, and uh, has no definite cure. The typical symptoms include pain, infertility, and abnormal bleeding. Optimal treatment remains unclear, but should be directed to the symptomatology. The surgical excision is the most effective approach with respect to fertility. Better medical therapy are needed. If you like this lecture, please press on the uh, like icon, and don't forget to press on the notification and subscribe icons as well. Thank you very much.